The World Health Organization is planning talks on how best to deal with the new strain of COVID-19 in Britain. On the agenda will be strategies to test and reduce transmission. WHO says that research is ongoing to determine whether vaccines will be effective against the new strain. Now, the CEO of BioNTech is confident that its coronavirus inoculation will work. But even if it doesn't, the German pharmaceutical firm says that it can adapt its vaccine in as little as six weeks. We don't know at the moment if our vaccine is also able to, to uh, pro provide protection against this new variant. But scientifically, it is highly likely that the immune response by this vaccine also, also can deal with the new virus, virus variants. Uh, we can directly start uh, to, um, to engineer a vaccine which completely mimics this new, new mutation. And we could be able to provide a new vaccine uh, uh, technically within six weeks. Uh, so that means a, a vaccine which uh, contains this information. The new, more infectious strain has prompted countries around the world to close their borders to the United Kingdom. Singapore is the latest in Asia to tighten its travel curbs. All long-term pass holders and short-term visitors who've been to the UK within the past two weeks will not be allowed to enter or transit through Singapore. Another ban takes effect from midnight tomorrow. And India is also on alert after six travellers from Britain tested positive for COVID-19. It's not clear if they are infected by the new strain, though. India's ban on flights from the UK, that will take effect tomorrow. Ollie Barrett joins us live now from London for more. Ollie, first up, several measures to tackle this new variant strain. It's set off alarm bells. Absolutely, it has. One of the things that the UK continues to do is gather as much data as possible on this new variant, study it, but also share it with its international partners. British scientists certainly still believe that there is no evidence yet to suggest that this new variant causes more serious disease than previous variants, or indeed uh, anything to suggest that it could lead to higher fatality rates, or indeed that it could escape the effects of the vaccine that is currently already in use in the United Kingdom and others that are coming down the tracks. But all of that information being kept under review. One other thing that's worth pointing out on that is that the UK does have greater genomic surveillance capability than almost any other country on Earth. So it continues to be able to contribute a lot of information to the fight against this new variant. But it's also possible that this new variant could be spreading in European and other countries without it being uh, uh, fully aware of by the countries uh, in question. It could be spreading already and quite rapidly. There are a number of European countries that do have outbreaks that are growing at the moment at, at quite a pace. The European Union says that it is going to try and coordinate its response as much as possible. The WHO wants an internationally coordinated response as well. But bringing this back to the UK, we of course have the toughest tier four lockdown restrictions in place for London, parts of the southeast of England and the east of England too, as a result of the new variant becoming the dominant variant in that part of the country. Country, but we're also now seeing growing calls for the rest of the country to move into the toughest tiered lockdown restrictions, given that scientists do now believe that the variant is in all parts of the United Kingdom. Holly, dozens of countries, including Singapore, are set to close borders to UK travellers. What's been the response from the UK to that? Well, the, the UK says it understands the reaction and the anxieties that many countries around the world are feeling about this new variant and some of the actions that are being taken. Privately, it's uh, quite angry, actually, at some of the action being taken by France in terms of shutting its border, particularly to the freight that is now being blocked from moving um, in either direction. There may be an agreement on that later today. The French and the British are discussing ways of getting freight moving again. At the moment, lorries are able to travel from France into the UK and drop off their goods, but they then can't get back to the European continent. That is leading to over 1,500 lorries now parked up in Kent in southern England with nowhere to go. There may be an agreement reached 
which sees mass testing in the south of England to allow drivers with lorries, hauliers, to get back into France to continue their journeys back to where they came from on the European continent. That is going to be a huge logistical exercise. Supply chain issues are possible too. Supermarkets warning that if this issue, when it comes to freight and haulage, isn't sorted out in the next 24 hours or so, then people here in the UK are going to start noticing things missing on their supermarket shelves. Yeah, thanks for getting us up to speed. Ollie Barrett speaking to us from London.